good morning to every one of you, uh, to our audience and uh, church members and covenant partners, friends of our ministry, those of you from the Presbyterian and Reformed Church, which is my primary tradition, and those of you from the traditional churches, Pentecostals and Evangelicals, and those of you also from other religions, this is Bishop Idikai Mary. I want to thank you for joining us this morning um, to worship. Uh, for quite some time now, we have uh, we have not been airing our morning worship uh, broadcast. Uh, there are so many things that we are doing to lay a very solid foundation to to our business and to our ministry and to our church here in the United States and around the world. Because what we are doing is uh, a global ministry, something that uh, cuts across culture and cuts across race, ethnic groups, tribes, and languages. So um, if you feel God leading you to be of help to what we are doing, if you also have topics uh, pertaining to Christianity or other world religion that you want us to tackle, to broadcast on, to speak on in our normal show or in our world class seminar, please let us know. If you also have questions regarding scripture, sacred scriptures, or anything that has to do with sacred scripture and um, you what what you have out there is not satisfactory to you, please do email us or do call our office. We enter this service in the name of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I just want to inform all of you that there are also live audience on on the on the phone line on the ministry phone line who are also joining us so every morning uh, we will be having this kind of services coming to you um, so let's go let us pray let us worship God let us pray in the name of God the Father in the name of Christ Jesus, our God, our King, our Redeemer. In the name of the Holy Spirit, our God and our Lord. The God in the now. We lift up our prayers to you and our worship to you, O God of glory. The God of our God, Jesus. Penetrates every essence of our lives and our beings and our minds. You are spirit, but you are also physical. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and manifest who you are in us, with us, and through us. Tonight, this early morning is morning now. During this vigil, People of God, what we are also doing is a vigil for the feasts of Gabriel and Michael, Archangels and all the angels. This is also their vigil. The service will be at 12 noon Central Time tomorrow, September 29. We are already in September 29 today. We ask, O oh God, as you created the ruling angels according to your ordinances and statutes of government that they rule 
over the created world and planets, over the departments of your government. And as you connect each and every one of us to each archangelic ministries, especially myself to the ministry of Gabriel, my beloved Archangel. Fill us, O oh God, with a sense of new direction, fill us with a sense of supernatural cognitive imagination into the realms of mysteries, reality itself born out of a sense of knowing. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our God, who rules and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Vicky, let us tell the world out there the passages of scriptures for today, please. For those of you who followed our daily, our daily readings or daily mass or daily liturgy, here is the reading for today's morning worship, September 29. Vicky, go ahead. be from 3rd John. It's not the Gospel of John, it's the third letter of John, and you will find that at the end of your Bible before Jude and Revelation. And the psalm for today is Psalm 94. Also read Ezra chapter 7 and chapter 8. Okay. So the book of Ezra for the Old Testament sacred scripture readings for today is Ezra chapter 7 and chapter 8. For the psalm is Psalm number 94. And for the epistle for today, it is the epistles, the small letters of John, that is third John. We have first John, first letter of John, second letter, and then third John. They are before Jude and the book of Revelation. It's not the Gospel of John. We have as our we have as a church and as a ministry we have looked, we have read the readings for today. And because we do not want to bore you with long readings, we always pick a verse or a word from the readings of today and that is what we will lay our emphasis on we will be reading from third john verse 2 go ahead okay beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. The Lord bless to us the reading from his epistle. To his name be all praise and honor and glory and majesty and riches and strength and power. Let this word penetrate into the highest points of our being as spirit humans, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear ye the proclamation, hear ye the proclamation of the word.
you do not need to die to go to heaven to receive care, compassion, or comfort. You do not need until you go to heaven to enjoy the welfare package that the kingdom of heaven has poured on planet earth. You do not need until you are reassigned to the heavenly realms for you to be happy and to live in fine houses and drive beautiful cars and have investments that constantly yield money that you will translate to riches and riches that you will make into automated wealth wealth that will never stop you do not need to stay in a bad relationship with any human being to fulfill ecclesiastical laws that is church laws or cultural obligations those are manifold sins if you do that it's not until Jesus comes back or you yourself he calls you to continue your assignment in the heavenly realms before you find your assignment and your place and dream and plans on the earth I want you to be aware that the desire, the beginning and the end of all things has to do with being in dominion and that is translated into be fruitful, multiply in everything good have dominion or I give you dominion I give you dominion I give you the ability to make things happen I give you the opportunity to be fruitful fruitfulness is the fertilizer that make the crop to enjoy the richness of the soil and to bust out with joy of a big harvest increase dominion means brand what is your brand what is your investment what do you enjoy to do and how can you and I and God translate that into product and services and be rewarded financially and then we can use that money to create riches with the abundance of riches wealth is accumulated replenish before things come to an end put it put things into action don't let any day go by without you being blessed your primary job on the earth and in the heavenlies is the blessing is the creation of wealth and the ecstasy of happiness beloved my prayer for you says the elder John the writer the hagiographer
a sacred writer. I am convinced of this one thing. And that is why I project my thoughts into you. That's the highest form of prayers. I hope the writers describes our writing. The highest forms of prayers is the projection of thoughts from the heavens into you and from you to them. And the release of strong desires for the good of yourself or of somebody else into them. For when your desire for good things is very strong, and when your focus is total, there's no witch, there's no spell, there's no incantation, there's no Lucifer that can stop you. My thoughts for you is that you prosper. Many people try to explain away what prosperity is. It's simply that you are you have the good things of life. You have abundance. Prosperity means you have abundance. You are contented and you are creating and you are creating more wealth. You, you, you are doing increase. Do not stop. Next thing, I want you to have health. I want you to be healthy so that you stay young. Many people do not believe what heaven taught me. And that is, they can stop your growing old too fast. That's what happened to me. Heaven has, you see, when you are constantly sick and you don't have the things to live a life of happiness, you start to age too quickly. Sickness and poverty and stress and depression, they make you age too quickly. Exposure to bad things and bad news makes you age too quickly. Exposure to trouble, constant troubled and stressed out people will make you age too quickly. And I reach a place where I look at myself and I say to God, this is not how angels look like. I've never really been beautiful. I thought I was when I was young. I want you to take my age back, reverse it, take me back to 20 years. And it happened just like that. I started talking about happiness and reversing aging since 2012. And I'll continue to do some more work about that. You have to believe this. Not just that you have to believe it, you have to know this for certain thing. And that is, this is, angels do not age, so why should I? So you can tell me, oh, you live in the earth. There is decay on earth, really. Then why did Jesus die? Why was he resurrected for me? I mean, I, I mean, he's part of growing elderly. But should it not be that the, the more elderly I am, the more beautiful and lovely I look, the more healthy I shall be? Sin was already in the world when people like Methuselah lived to be like 900 and something years old. Adam and Eve, they rebel against God. Go and see how long they lived. So why must 
why must I be different? I have been shown the secrecy to aging very slowly. And if you call me, I will talk to you about it. They are very simple things. You look at me today, my belly has gone down almost completely. I've lost a lot of weight because I decided how much weight I want to carry and how much I do not want to carry. I do not ever want to look ugly. I want to be beautiful like angels do. I want to live a life of abundance like heaven, like they do. Why should alien forces come to earth to take from us? And we who owns the earth cannot dig and take from the earth and create and build. That's your job. Create and build. That's your job. Create and build. Don't let anyone talk you out of creating and building. I want you healthy. I want you to be young. Don't let your body go. Be in charge of nature. Don't let nature be in charge of you. Please write that down. It's the major key. Be in charge of nature. Don't let nature be in charge of you where it is possible. Please write that down. That's the major key. Your soul must prosper. That is your mind, the mind realm. One of the greatest things God has given to you is your spirit, is your body, and your mind. And he's talking about the entire thing. Prosperity is of these three, these three paradigms. Spirit, mind, body. Because it's all about happiness. I want you to be a great reader. Great reader. Great writer. Cultivate the lifestyle of the mind. You are not to read just any book anybody writes. Or just watch any movie or listen to any music. Be discriminatory, be choosy in what you read, in what you listen to, in what you participate in. I want your mind to be productive. Please write this down. Progress begins with the active involvement of the culture of the mind. That's where progress begins. You cannot make any progress without investing. Please. When you put involvement, also put investing in the culture of the mind. You must be involved and you must invest in the culture of the mind. When I was at New Orleans celebrating my yearly proclamation and uh, my years of service, to the church and to the world and to the kingdom of God. One of the first things that I did when I went to New Orleans was to look for a bookstore. And I bought some works that I could find on George Patton, the general. And books that has to teach me strategies, tactical strategies of running a world class business 
through the eyes of the military, the FBI, the CIA, and the intelligence departments of different countries of the world. Big box. I spent over $200 just for such books. I've read about, um, I've read 15 of them already. Wonderful stuff that I would never have known. Because you see, when you read, it excites your mind. It, it brings out, it forces things out of you that you never know existed there. It was a long time ago when I was doing my baccalaureate studies in the University of Calabar that a wonderful Christian person sent me a book that has to do with um, the story of Adolf Hitler. For the first time as I was reading that book, I took my pen and I wrote, whenever there will be a major problem on the earth, the Jews will be the first people to be blamed. And it has come to be true. I read books like, uh, there was this work to whom the, uh, to whom uh, those who were not ashamed of the world. According to the book of Hebrews, there is a novel like that. It's the novel, but not quite. A lot of wonderful books. And I'm all still a voracious reader through reading physical books or audio books. Because you can't grow without reading major works of great people. Two girls stop Jeff Fleck, the senator from Arizona, at the elevator yesterday. And one of them said, look at me. Lawrence O'Donnell said this, that bet, a victory for decency. I pray that these three things that the elders spoke about in the third epistle of John will happen to you. Tonight, as we hold a vigil for my archangel, Gabriel, and Michael, the protector of the church, the general of the army of the kingdom of God that we belong to and all the angels. I ask that the Almighty God will make you prosper in all things and in all your ways. Laudato Jesu Christus, Praise be to Jesus Christ, our God. People of God, what we believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament and in the traditions of the church is true. It is not a first culture it's not fake, it's not false. It is what men and women of honor, what they experienced with planet heaven and with the world of angels. I invite you throughout today to join me in celebrating the creation the life and ministries, the professional jobs of ruling angels and ordinary angels. 
in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Lord, we fill your house with dignity of beauty. Your power is hidden within your beauty. In the solemnity of this day, visit the earth anew. Touch us, O oh Father. The word that you have proclaimed, use it to do mighty things. As part of the world is awake, and part of it is going to bed. And those in the International Space Center, they see the ending and the beginning of day and night constantly. As the different probing missions go through different planets, Lord, remember that you sent us here to create and to build. And in the center of it is not prayer, but worship. We give you everything that we are and have. Lord, make us people of abundance and people of satisfaction. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our God, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless each and every one of you and keep you and through you. I ask that the assignment of the kingdom of heaven be done in our little planets. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. 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 And Amen. According to the tradition of the church, on a night like this where we keep a vigil for Gabriel and Michael in our, in our studio, we keep a statue of Gabriel, our primary guardian, Archangel. So as we depart, we will bring it out here. And it will be here till the end of the services tomorrow. First of all, let me let you be aware we are not allowed to worship angels no matter what category they are. But we thank God for their creation and for the responsibility and duty that they carry, heavy task. And they have been doing this who knows how many billions or however 
it is recorded. And we are very happy to be associated with them. They are servants of God, just as we are. In dignity, some of them are more than us. And in responsibility, they carry a lot of burden. So I hope that you will learn how to enjoy working with them. For your health, for your prosperity, and for the building of your thoughts to create services and products. When you go to some of our churches and you see, uh, you see like statues of Jesus, of God the Father. I've never seen a statue of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you see statues of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, all this. Some of them crazy angels, we don't even know who they are. <laughs> the church, we call these things holy icons. We call them sacred icons. Uh, unless you're matured, I do not ask you to use them. If you have learned the art of meditation and of focusing without them, you don't need them. Like, I don't need them. Personally, I don't. There are people who do, who cannot focus on Jesus and on God and on the Holy Ghost except through statues in the church. Okay, that's just where they are. And sometimes it is part of the tradition of whatever denomination they go to. Sometimes it's just good for you to have something that reminds you of what you belong. What I tell people is, have your Bible and make sure that your mind is centered on Jesus. I greet you and I wish you a very happy weekend. Thank you.